Hey guys and welcome to History Behind the Warrior and today we'll be going over Sub-Zero. Just want to thank everyone from the previous video before forgetting all the likes and views that it did, it has been phenomenal. So if possible, let's try to beat that one by liking, sharing this and even subscribing because I think from that one video I got about 33 different subscribers. So let's see how far we can make this video go. Now as before, spoilers ahead. There have been two different Sub-Zeros, which means I'll be going over them individually. However, there's a certain point with the first Sub-Zero where I will cut him off completely because he does become his own character and I will make a video for him at some point in the future. And also the fact that I'll be excluding Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero. And as we all know, <sighs> that game, you know, that game, it's not canon. Let's burn it, let's forget it ever existed. But now, let's get to the video. Just want to say again, spoilers ahead, you've been warned. Pre-Mortal Kombat. All that is ever really mentioned is that Bai Han and Kwai Liang were abducted as children by the Lin Kuei, and were trained to be the world's most deadly assassins. During the first tournament, not much is known about Kwai Liang, however, he did go by a name before, known as Fundra. We can only assume that he was either a normal assassin, or maybe he did have some form of power affinity with lightning or thunder. Bai Han is one of the world's best assassins and fighters, and is asked by the Lin Kuei to represent them in the Mortal Kombat tournament, in which he was offered a place by none other than the sorcerer and the host himself, Shang Tsung. Also to inform those who don't know, Sub-Zero has a very personal rivalry with the Shira Ryu member known as Hanzo Hisashi, and blames Bai Han for the murder of his entire clan. Mortal Kombat 1 Returning from a mission, Bai Han had received word from the Lin Kuei that he'd been invited to fight in the Mortal Kombat tournament by Shang Tsung himself. The Lin Kuei had previously received the contract from an anonymous member to assassinate the sorcerer. This mission would be assigned to Bai Han and his job was to get as close as possible to the sorcerer and kill him. Due to the original Mortal Kombat lacking a story to start off with, not much is known about who he fought besides Scorpion. Now back to the main story, Sub-Zero would fight in the tournament and even witness Goro and Shang Tsung's loss to the White Lotus member known as Liu Kang. As the island descended into chaos, he would be confronted by Hanzo Hisashi, who would now become the bloodthirsty and vengeful Scorpion. The two would engage in a bloody battle, but in the end, Bai Han could not stand up to Scorpion's hellfire and fell by the hand of the Hellspawn himself. Now this is where things get a little interesting, now this isn't the end of Bai Han, his soul is actually sent to the Never Realm and is corrupted much like Scorpion's. Uh, his entire storyline will be talked about later on, you'll see why. Now this is where we have someone else to fill in the shoes as the Cryomancer Sub-Zero, and it's actually his younger brother, Kwai Liang. Mortal Kombat 2 with Bai Han now dead, Kwai Liang would drop his old name to train and become the new Sub-Zero, seeking retribution for his murder by the hands of Scorpion. Kwai Liang would attempt to confront the Hellspawn with the intention to destroy his brother's murderer, despite the rumour and reasoning of Scorpion being that Bai Han murdered his clan. During the second tournament, Kwai Liang would fight and defeat his opponent but ultimately spare all their lives. Due to Scorpion seeing this, the Hellspawn was shocked and confused at why Sub-Zero would spare his opponent's life, it was very uncharacteristic of him to do so. It was at this point Scorpion was able to deduce the identity of the new Sub-Zero, learning that it was his younger brother Kwai Liang, and thus swore no harm towards him. Kwai then was unable to fill his own personal goals of killing Scorpion since Hanzo had left the tournament. He also failed his mission assigned to him by the Lin Kuei, much like his brother of assassinating the sorcerer known as Shang Tsung. However, it wasn't a complete loss as he assisted Liu Kang and Raiden with the defeat of Shao Kahn. Mortal Kombat 3 during this time, the Lin Kuei had acquired cybernetic technology and were forcing all members to take part in the cyber initiative and become robots. Sub-Zero and Smoke refused to participate and were branded as traitors by the Lin Kuei. Whilst on the run, Sub-Zero would successfully escape from the clutches of the Lin Kuei but sadly Smoke was not so successful and was forcibly transformed into a cyborg. The Lin Kuei would hold a grudge towards the Cryomancer and send three robot assassins after him, one being Sector the second being Cyrax, and as a twist of fate, the third being his best friend, Smoke. Due to this, Sub-Zero would seek protection and allied himself with Raiden. In return for this, he would fight Shao Kahn's extermination squad during the Earth Realm invasion. During the invasion, Sub-Zero would be forced to fight a cyberized Smoke, and he would attempt to convince his old friend that he still had a soul, and this would eventually allow Smoke to override his programming. With Smoke by his side, Sub-Zero and Smoke overwhelmed the cyberized Cyrax and Sector. 
However, instead of destroying the two cyborgs, he then reprogrammed them to assassinate Shao Kahn. Sadly, all the cyborgs failed and once again, Smoke was captured and sent to Outworld. It was not long from now that Liu Kang had killed Shao Kahn, which in turn reverted the realms back to their original states. Mortal Kombat 4 With the fallen Elder God Shinnok returning to destroy Earthrealm, Raiden enlisted Sub-Zero to help him defeat the corrupted Elder God. He would once again don his brother's colours and fight as Sub-Zero. During Mortal Kombat 4, Quan Chi had murdered Scorpion's family and framed Kwai Liang for their murder, which agitated the demon thirsting for the blood of his enemy. Sub-Zero would then be confronted by Hanzo in Goro's lair. Outmatched, Kwai lost to Scorpion, who then asked him why he did what he did, in which Sub-Zero would say he played no part in his family's extermination. Quan Shi would then reveal the truth that his hand played a part in both their lives. The murder of the Shirai Ryu, Hanzo's death, the creation of Scorpion, the death of Bai Han, and finally the death of Hanzo's family, all done by his hand. Quan Shi, convinced that he had the upper hand, proceeded to teleport Scorpion away, but was grabbed by a bloodthirsty Hanzo, dragging him to the Neverrealm where he would make him torture and suffer for his lies. This would actually be the last time the two would face each other till Armageddon. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance After Scorpion's disappearance, Sub-Zero would return to the Lin Kuei headquarters to only find out that the Grandmaster had been overthrown by Sector, saying that the Old One was weak. Sector would then attempt to acquire the Dragon Medallion but was stopped by Sub-Zero who had defeated the Cyborg in an intense battle. Now the leader of the reformed Lin Kuei, he would acquire the Dragon Medallion, which in turn enhanced his freezing capabilities to levels he never thought possible. Kuei brought massive changes to the Lin Kuei, moving them to the Antarctic and teaching the new students to be seasoned warriors and not brainwashed killers. He would then hold a tournament to recruit any new members. It was here that he met a girl called Frost, a fighter who also had the capabilities of Cryomancy. Impressed and feeling obliged to help another Cryomancer, he took her under his wing. As good as Frost was, she did not believe in Kwai Liang's ideals, and this would often lead cause her to clash with him and his allies. After Liu Kang's death, Raiden approached Sub-Zero and asked for his assistance in killing Zhang Tsung and Quan Chi, making up the Deadly Alliance. Although shocked by the news, he still had the intention of showing the world that the Lin Kuei were the strongest clan around. Sub-Zero united with his allies, taking Frost with him, but as they were separated off from the Earthrealm warriors, Frost took this opportunity to attempt to steal the Dragon Medallion from Sub-Zero. Frost succeeded in stealing the medallion, however she couldn't comprehend its sheer power and ultimately and ironically froze herself, seemingly killing her. Sub-Zero placed the blame on his shoulders for her death, feeling that he failed to dampen her arrogance and pride, failing as a teacher. Mortal Kombat Deception While searching for a resting place for Frost, Kwai Liang had come across an outworld civilization where they had capabilities of manipulating the cold. Shocked, he would learn that he and Frost were descendants of these people. Sub-Zero would then forgive and bury Frost for her betrayal. In the chambers of her burial, he would discover ancient armor and by donning it, he once again was able to increase his cryomancy powers. After saying his goodbyes to Frost, Sub-Zero traveled to Outworld and slaughtered a group of attacking Tarkatan warriors. Sub-Zero would then find a wounded Kenshi and save his life. He would then tell him that Raiden and his forces fell to the Deadly Alliance. Sub-Zero would then take Kenshi to Earthrealm but was jumped and blinded by Hataru. However, Kenshi in turn for saving his life would fend off Hataru. In conquest mode, Chijenko would gather Earthrealm's strongest warriors to destroy the revived Dragon King Onaga. During this, Sub-Zero would meet Serena and learn that she helped his brother Bai Han a very long time ago and helped him escape the confines of the Neverrealm. As a form of gratitude, he would offer her asylum in the Lin Kuei. As they were leaving, they saw two dark figures and it was none other than his brother, Noob Saibot and his best friend, Smoke. Yeah, not really much of a spoiler, but Noob Saibot and Sub-Zero, the original Sub-Zero, actually the same person. He got brought back by Quan Chi, much like Scorpion got brought back by Quan Chi, so... Eh, a little bit of a twist there. Not that big. Kwai Liang, provoked and shocked, would chase after them, but was beaten into unconsciousness by them. Sub-Zero was going to be killed until Serena jumped in and pushed off the assassins. Upon waking up, Sub-Zero would wake up to a demonic Serena and lash out in fear, making her flee to the depths of the Neverrealm. Upon returning to the Lin Kuei, he would find many of the members killed by an insane Frost who wanted to kill Sub-Zero. 
However, she was no match for the Grand Master and was frozen once more in a block of ice. With no forgiveness in his heart, he confined her in a temple and said that when she recovers and wakes up, she will answer for her crimes. Mortal Kombat Armageddon Sometime later, the half-god Taven would arrive at the Lin Kuei Temple searching for a gift left to him by his mother. Taven defeated many of the warriors on his way to Sub-Zero but accidentally unleashed a vengeful frost. Before the battle between Sub-Zero and Taven had finished, Sub-Zero had noticed the tattoo in his face. Recognising the tattoo, he led the half-god to the vault containing the present left by his mother. However, as this was happening, Noob and Smoke would attack the temple, cyberizing the defeated Lin Kuei members into cyberized demonic robots. With assistance from Taven, Sub-Zero was able to defeat the cyberized Lin Kuei members and the duo of Smoke and Noob. Sub-Zero would then learn that Noob Cybot was in fact his brother, and proceeded to attempt to cleanse Bai Han. However, it is left unknown if it was successful. <sighs> Finally, this is where the original timeline ends. Oh god, I hate the original timeline. Anyway, time to kick off this reboot. Now, there's been no actual drastic changes to the character, luckily, but as we know, spoiler, not spoiler, everyone dies at the end of Armageddon except Raiden and Shao Kahn. Of course, as we do know, Raiden sends a message back in time to his past self. So the story kind of goes the exact same way. Scorpion hates Sub-Zero. Scorpion kills Sub-Zero, no surprise there. Kuai Liang takes up the mantle. Of course, the cyber initiative is happening at this point as well, so Kuai Liang and Smoke have run away. Kuai begins training with Smoke, beginning to understand and control his new cryomancy powers with the intentions to kill Scorpion. While searching for the Hellspawn, he comes across a sleeping Ermac who destroys both of Jax's arms, but is ultimately defeated by Kuai Liang. The battle is however not yet over, as just after he meets a fully cyberized Cyrax and is forced to defeat his former friend. Continuing his search, he enters Shao Kahn's Colosseum, demanding to fight Scorpion, but is instead tested by Reptile, who falls at his feet. Shao Kahn is ultimately impressed and gives Sub-Zero Scorpion. Scorpion glares in shock and insults Bai Han before fighting Kuai Liang. However, this time Scorpion would lose, but before he could be killed, the Lin Kuei would capture Sub-Zero and cyberize him. Cyber Sub-Zero is then seen during the Striker story arc and loses to him and then gets reprogrammed by Raiden and his allies. Sub-Zero then assists Raiden and the Earth Realm warriors by infiltrating Shao Kahn's forces. However, he is scanned by Sector who finds out that he has been tampered with but is shut down before he can react. Kuai Yang then finds a group of soldiers being held hostage by Kano, Kintaro and Goro. Sub-Zero immobilizes them and sets the soldiers free. However, Ermac arrives and attempts to shut down Sub-Zero, but he is ultimately overwhelmed. Sub-Zero then returns to Raiden, who tells him that he's been tasked to take down the Soulnado created by Quan Chi. Arriving at the site, he is confronted by Noob Saibot, who reveals to him that is none other than his older brother, Bi Han. Kuai Liang is shocked, however, Bai Han then rejects any relation to his younger brother and proceeds to fight him. The two brothers battle, but in the end, Kuai Liang proves that he is the better brother. Now this is where the story arc kind of ends, and just in case you guys want to know, spoiler, again, everyone gets killed, like everyone. And Kuai Liang, because of Raiden's faults, actually becomes a revenant of Quan Chi. Now I can finally go over Mortal Kombat X since it has been released. I will also be uh, linking the comic and the game as much as possible. It's a little bit hazy because the comic is far from finished. So this is my best interpretation of what there is so far. Mortal Kombat X As seen before, Sub-Zero belongs to Quan Chi and assists in the battle against Earthrealm. He's seen in the beginning getting beaten by Johnny Cage who remarks that he preferred when they were on the same side. Later on, Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage invade Quan Chi's lair. They are confronted by Quan Chi and his fellow Revenants, but all of them get beaten and lose. During this, Raiden cures all the Revenants by tampering with what seems to be Quan Chi's flesh pits. Now in between the flashback and the game, the comic seems to fill out what happens with Sub-Zero, so I'll be talking about that from this point onwards and cutting back and forth between the comic book and the game. Kuai Liang is recruited once again by Raiden to recover Kami Dogu daggers. Unknown to Sub-Zero, these daggers have demonic possession properties to them. Whilst fighting Kano, Kano cuts Sub-Zero with the dagger, allowing the demonic possession to take over his body. When the demon finally let go of possessing him, Sub-Zero realised that he was being chased by the Lin Kuei, and ultimately resorts to cutting himself with the dagger once more to unleash its power. Because of this, he goes AWOL. Takeda and Scorpion are then tossed by Raiden to capture Sub-Zero. 
The demon recognises Hanzo and baits him into becoming Scorpion as the two clash. Knowing that Hanzo hasn't completely given in, he taunts the former Hellspawn and knocks Hanzo out. Takeda then takes the dagger, but the demon uses its cryomancing abilities and freezes the entire area. By the time Kwai Liang wakes up and tries to gather his thoughts, he is attacked by Scorpion who brutally beats him within an inch of his life. Whilst unconscious, Kwai Liang has dreams of his time at Quan Chi's service, and shows Quan Chi stripping the circuits from Cyber Sub-Zero and rebuilding him as a human revenant. Kwai Liang passes in and out of consciousness but is brought back by Bo Rai Cho, before waking up in a bed and is comforted by Raiden. And that's where we are kind of in the comic, so it's time to actually go to the game properly and fill out what happens from this point onwards. At this point in the game, we learn that Sub-Zero is the new Grandmaster of the Lin Kuei and has killed Sector. He ultimately invites Hanzo Hasashi, also known as Scorpion, the leader of the Shirai Ryu, to make amends for their past, even though there was some interference from Frost. Kwai Liang teaches Hanzo the truth, revealing Quan Chi's hand in his family and clan's murder. He is later seen in present time testing Takeda, Cassie, Jackie and Kung Jin by fighting each of them and pointing out their flaws as a team. In the final scene of the game, Cassie Cage is surrounded by Koto Khan and his forces, but is saved by Sub-Zero and the Lin Kuei. And this is actually the last appearance of Sub-Zero in the Mortal Kombat franchise so far. So here's the Sub-Zero video you guys have been asking for, it's finally done and it's finally here and I really do hope you enjoyed it because there was a lot of work in this one for me. But anyway, I'd like to talk to you guys directly saying who would you like to see next? Put it down in the comments below, whoever has the most thumbs up, I'll do that character. If no one really wants to do that, fine, I'll do my own one. I'll probably be putting about one of these out every week if I can, but no promises there. Another question for you guys, since this channel only comes to one video per week, what else would you like to see in between? Pop it down in the comments below and let me know. Anyway guys, it's the end of the video, you know what to do, hit like, subscribe and share this video. I'll see you guys next time.